morning. Today we are talking about competitive band, playing your little heart out for a panel of so-called experts and being told if you are better or worse than the other people. I have been involved in band competitions forever. Forever. And it has made me the musician that I am today. But it is not without its flaws. And that's what the focus of this video is. The flaws of competitive music. But before we get into it, make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. I am currently the fourth most subscribed EMC channel, and when I become number one, I will make a very special video. So back when I was a super newbie freshman in high school, this was the first year I really experienced how frustrating competitive marching band is. Similar to other competitive marching band programs, Washington Township High School, we would practice all throughout the summer, we'd have band camp for a week, and then we'd continue practicing two to three times a week throughout the school year in the fall. And even through all that hard work and determination, we came in dead last at every show. Dead last. And I was getting really upset because we worked so hard and I thought we were getting so good. But I had a strategy to infiltrate the competition with a man on the inside. My dad. He went to every show and I asked him to film the other bands at one of the shows so that I could watch it and study it and see what was going on. So I watched the video of all of the bands and I had no idea why they were beating us by like five to ten points. It didn't make sense to me, okay? I was a little clueless 15 year old freshman child. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, if I watched all those again now, I would probably be able to tell you why we got last, but at the time, it was really frustrating and annoying. And I'm sure that some of you current competitive band members have some of the same frustrations that I had. Just keep at it, all right? You're probably still gonna get last place, but you should strive for excellence, even if you get told that you suck. But this story has a happy ending, okay? At finals, there was like 10 of us groups going up against each other. And at the very end, they announced the scores like when we're all sitting in the stadium. And my school's band was not announced first, which meant we didn't get last. And we all cheered so much for that. It was kind of funny that we cheered louder for when some other schools announced more than our own school's name. And then we were announced second. So we, yeah, we got second to last place, which was a step up from the rest of the season. <laughs> we beat somebody. Woo. I found it much more frustrating being on the teaching side of things in dealing with competitive band, you know, because being a marching member, all you got to do is like play and, you know, hope that everything is done well. But being, you know, the teacher and the show designer, you know, the score is kind of more based off of how well you do your job. There was this one year where I taught with Tony G. We wrote this Looney Tunes show, and this was one of my favorite shows that we've ever designed. This was just all of the antics and craziness and creativity that we could possibly cram into five and a half minutes. To me, it was super entertaining and one of the greatest shows ever designed ever. But to the judges, a lot of them did not like it. And this show was quite a lot different than our competitors, all right? It was just like a bunch of segments of craziness, all right? It was like a Looney Tunes episode. That was the point of it, all right? The show was called A Little Bit Loony. It has to be Loony. <laughs> And the scores that year were just so freaking inconsistent from judge to judge. It was insane. I remember the WGI regional show. So the general effect judge, they judged one category for music and one for visual. And we got seventh in music and fourth in visual. Now this was out of like 23 groups. That's pretty darn good getting fourth place out of all those groups. The music judge had us a little bit lower, right? I think we were 14th or 15th, something like that. Which we weren't super clean at that point in the season, so... You know, it is what it is. Now these WGI regional shows, there's like a prelims and a finals later in the same day, and they take the top 12 placed groups that get to compete again in finals. So we were hoping to get into the finals contest and it all came down to the visual judge. And he put us in an outstanding dead last. 23 out of 23, I think. So it was something like that, it was a long time ago. Now the visual judge, they kind of like nitpick a little more than the general effect judge. Like maybe the forms were dirty or people were not marching clean, but it's pretty crazy that we are effective at visual, but we're also the worst at visual. It doesn't make any sense. It's very frustrating. But at these band shows, they have some very helpful ideas for critiquing your ensemble. You get a judge recording as your show is going on. They are talking into a recording device and you get to listen to their thoughts as the show is going in real time. 
And not only that, there is a critique meeting afterwards. You get to go into a room with the judges and talk about it. Now this is your opportunity as a staff member to have a debate with the judges. You can ask them relevant questions about the show, what they were thinking. You can maybe even call them out on some things that they missed. Because there is a chance that those judges will judge your show again, so you want to make sure that they know what to look for. So it's very important that you go into this meeting and you are well-spoken, to the point, and direct. Now unfortunately for me, I am very quiet and awkward and don't like talking to strangers. So every time we had one of these critique meetings, it kind of went something like this. America, percussion instructor. Oh, salutations, I'm Steven Sassafras, the percussion judge. <laughs> oh, I got a new industrial skull protector. <laughs> Gotta stay protected out there. Okay, so let me ask you first and foremost, did you get a chance to listen to the recording? Yes, yes I did. Okay, excellent, excellent. And uh, do you have any questions for me? Um, no. Okay then, well, uh, I'm just gonna read off of my notes here and talk at you for the next two minutes. And honestly, I can't remember your show whatsoever, okay? There was like 36 bands at this. I can't remember every single one of them. <laughs> oh my goodness. Frustrations of competitive band did not stop with marching band and drum corps. No, it got way worse in concert percussion. There were three times in my life where I entered concert percussion soloist contest, and all three of them were incredibly frustrating dealing with these judges' comments. The first contest that I entered was the Percussive Arts Society was having a video contest, and the winner got to play at PASIC for tens of people. So I was a junior in college at this time, I was preparing for my junior recital, so I played most of the rep that was going to be on that. I'm pretty sure it was a marimba solo, a multi-percussion solo, and a timpani solo. So this was back before I knew jack squat about filming and editing videos, alright? I actually had my friend film it and set up the microphones and do all the editing for me, because I had no clue how to do any of that. So my friend filmed me playing through all the stuff. I thought it went really well. You know, I was a couple months out from my recital, so this was also a good preparation for that. So I sent in the video, waited a few weeks, and then got an email back saying that I didn't win, all right? I don't think they had placements other than the winner, so, you know, whatever. But they did have judge critique that was sent out in a spreadsheet. And there was a whole heck of a lot of judges for this. I'm pretty sure there was in between 10 to 15 judges, so good job, Percussive Arts Society. However, <laughs> I don't think there was any guidance on what the critique should have been, because about half of the judges left nothing. It was just an empty box where the critique went. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot there. There was like three or four judges. The only critique they left was about the quality of my video and audio. Yeah, one guy wrote like a paragraph about the microphone placement over the marimba, which... I, I mean, sure, it's good to know that, but like... You know, this was like a music contest, <laughs> not not a music video contest, okay? Unfortunately, I don't have this video file or the spreadsheet anymore. It was like back when I used like my old college email and I can't get on there now. But from what I remember, like it was a decent quality video. Like it wasn't like awful or else I wouldn't have sent it in. And then there were a few other judges that only commented on visual stuff. Like nothing about the music. Like they just told me, you know, the general comment was that I didn't like move around enough. I, I like looked stiff, which I guess, you know, being a drum corps drummer, that's, you know, something I should have worked on. You know, I was trying to get like musical comments <laughs> by sending this in, but I guess those visual comments were still helpful. Definitely more helpful than those that only talked about the quality of the video that I wasn't even the one that filmed it. But my favorite comment written by any of the judges was not music exclamation point. That's it. That was the only comment. Not music. I had no idea what that meant. I still have no idea what that means. That's a very interesting comment though. Apparently this whole video of me playing music was not music. There was one judge, just one judge, that actually left like very detailed and good quality musical and visual comments. And that was Casey Cangelosi. He actually signed his name in the comment. He was the only one that did that, alright? The rest of the judges were anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, anonymous judges. So yes, Casey Cangelosi, if you are watching this video, thank you for your detailed and informative comments. You were like the only one that was actually, you know, helpful.
My senior year of college, there was once again another Percussive Arts Society soloist contest. This one was just a regional contest at New York University, and it was only on the concert snare drum. So there were three solos that we had to do for this. There was one that was required that everyone had to play, there was a rudimental snare solo of your choice, and a concert style snare solo of your choice. Now, I don't remember what the required or the rudimental piece that I played was. This was a really long time ago, but I do absolutely remember the concert snare piece I played. It was Prim by Askel Mason. This was a freaking beast of a concert snare drum solo. It was in 11-8 and had all kinds of crazy wacky rhythms. And this was once again a piece I was playing on my upcoming recital, so it was a good thing that I practiced it even more for this contest. So since it was close to home, I had, you know, some family, some friends, I had my, uh, my college professor, they all came out to watch me. And there was like 25 contestants at this, and I was one of the last, but I might have been the very last person to go. So I got to sit in the audience and watch a bunch of the people at the beginning. And everyone was pretty darn good, but so am I. All right, I thought I had this in the bag. Because I remember the top three, they all won some prizes. I think it was like cymbals and drumsticks and stuff. I don't really remember. But I was gunning for it, all right? I thought I had a good shot because I was really, really well prepared. So I played through all the solos. It went perfectly fine. Then we come back in, all of the snare drum contestants, and the judge decides to give this really unnecessary speech. Okay, everybody, I know it's getting real late here and some of you have really long drives home, but I just want to first thank all of the contestants for coming out. Thank you to all the judges, especially myself. I'm pretty awesome. And a definite thank you to all the people in the audience. You know, parents, professors, mentors, students. You're all super appreciative. It's not that I said all of that unnecessary stuff. Uh, before we get on with the scores, you know, there was a lot of great performances here today. A lot of great ones. But it was not without its issues, okay? Such as the guy who played Prim. Yeah, that guy. I could not feel the 11-8 pulse in your solo, okay? You really need to work on fixing that, okay, there, Prim guy? Oh my goodness. Like, bro, how are you gonna call me out like that in front of everyone? This is not one of those reality talent shows where you get critiqued publicly, okay? This is supposed to be a professional environment. Also, what? <laughs> you couldn't feel the 11-8, really? You can't feel it? I don't think you're supposed to feel it. It's not some kind of backbeat 11-8 groove the whole time, okay? You have to, you know, actually pay attention to the sheet music. So yeah, big surprise, I ended up not getting top three in that contest. The scores were actually all over the place. It was on a score of one to 10. Some of the judges had me like in the seven, eight, nine range, and some of them had me in like the three range. I'm pretty sure that one guy who said he couldn't follow the 11-8 had me down in like the three range. But after that, my college professor who was in the audience, he told me not to worry at all about that comment because the guy probably just got lost reading the sheet music and couldn't figure out what was going on. So that made me feel a whole heck of a lot better after he told me that. And here's a video clip of me playing through some of Prim. Can you feel the 11-8 groove? So the last concert percussion solo I ever entered was for Percussive Arts Society. Once again, they were doing another regional contest at New York University, this time on marimba. And for this one, all you did was play one marimba solo of your choice. And I picked my favorite marimba solo that I've ever played in my life, White Knuckle Stroll by Casey Cangelosi. Somebody share this video with Casey Cangelosi, okay? This is the second time I'm mentioning him, and his writing is fan-freaking-tastic. I loved this solo. So this was my super senior year of college, and I had some serious, serious marimba chops at this point, and I crushed this solo in the contest. It was a super clean run, and I was very proud of how I did. 
So this time I was one of the first performances out of like 25. I might have been the very first performance, I don't remember. So I got to go out in the audience and watch every single contestant after me, and my solo was so much different than everybody else's. Yeah, most of these marimba solos are like incredibly long, like <laughs> around 10 minutes, and yeah, watching like 25 of these back to back was a little bit mind numbing. But there was one other contestant that I remember very well. She played a marimba solo with eight mallets. And not only did she do that, but it was like really, really good and clean. So yeah, that was kind of mind blowing. And at that point I was like, okay, I'm probably not going to win. Maybe I'll get second though. And big surprise, I didn't get top three, okay? I might've got last place, okay? They don't read out all the scores, just the top three, but all of my numbers were between one and three out of 10. And every single judge wrote like something similar on the paper that I played really well, but they hated the piece. Like, but how can you hate White Knuckles Stroll? It's the coolest marimba piece ever. It is. You can't deny it. Like, even if you don't like the piece, like, can't you just judge it, like, based on how well the person did on it? <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. One of the judges, all they wrote on the paper was crappy piece, exclamation point, exclamation point, underline, underline, underline. That was it. That was the only feedback one of the judges decided that I needed to know. And also somehow, Eight Mallet Girl, she didn't even win. All right, she came in second though, so that's good. I remember the person that won, they had like the longest solo. I think it went on for almost a half an hour. Me personally, I would way rather listen to just the two and a half minutes of White Knuckle Stroll than some like 35 minute long marimba symphony. I don't know. Maybe that's why I keep losing these contests is because I have bad taste in music. So that's all the time we have today for me to talk about why I got frustrated with competitive band. But if you have a reason that you got frustrated, please compose that down in the comments. I would love to hear your frustrations. I would love to hear them. And also make sure that you click that subscribe button, ring that liberty bell, and click that like button. And also consider buying a custom t-shirt such as this one. I will leave that link in the description. And have a good morning.